I just keep I keep going back to um, something we said last week, and I think I said it uh, even even to you um, before we all went on vacation. This 49er quarterback thing for me has sort of ended up in a Fox CNN type of a space, which is to say choose or lose. Well, you like decision 2023. You look for what you want to see and then you only see that. So, for example, this goes with with both ways and all the quarter except for Brock. Brock's barely been out there. <laughs> Listen, like let me ask this question. Why is it relevant that Sam Donald has stunk in the past? Why is it relevant? Why is it relevant? Because we've seen him play quarterback, and he's not very good at mm. it. That's why it's relevant. Okay, so... So you, you're smaller, asking me to... Smaller sample, but I could say the exact same thing for Trey Lance. Well, Trey hasn't gotten a chance, Mark. And mm. you haven't seen him in be, the various Dakotas. Be, be genuine. Be genuine. It's more fun if I'm uh, disingenuous. Well, but, because honestly, no, but you you're are. Not, you're no, representing exactly how this why conversation it's so fun, goes. It, it bothers you a little bit. Well, no, it when doesn't I, bother I play me. The role. I know it, it doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. Whenever on the radio, I, yeah. So why does it matter that Sam Darnold has stunk in the past? Yeah. Because we have an actual body of work, and we've seen him stink in the past. And to your political analogy, let's just pretend that Sam Darnold was a senator at fill in the blank state. And we saw what he did as a senator in that state. That matters because you stunk as a senator, and now uh, you want me to vote Darnold in twenty twenty three? No, I don't. And that's the walk off. Well, it, it's four twenty two. We got another hour and a half. He stunk as a starter. He not a starter. Well, that's just semantics. No, it's not. Go it look is it. semantics it's because not. when he plays. He's still playing quarterback. It's not like you're going to come in and have him just be the holder. No, but the goal is for neither of them to play. Wait a minute. We're going to yell for six weeks about two players. It's not the goal. Yes, it is. Well, it's not the goal that matters because, yes, it doesn't matter. Like Cameron Latu is tight end number four. Well, if he has to be tight end number one, I need him to block and catch. Well, but 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 you don't get to do that. Because That's exactly what I get no, to do. You, you cannot. I will forbid you all oh, to boy. expect the backup to look as good as the starter. You don't get to do that. Don't look as good as the starter. Just don't look as bad as you if, looked in ah, Carolina but, and in New York, and that I, matters. But if I gave you Sam's numbers and said, That's your backup, you'd love it. You'd love it. One pick per game played? My man, he's got Dude. more TDs than picks. Do you know how many backups can say that? My brother, he has barely more TDs than picks. Chieftain, it's still a bigger number. Because now you're playing you're playing the, uh, the stat game of picking what stat you ever want. Listen. Holmes. <laughs> Pal. <laughs> totally. I was trying to think of a really cool one. Buddy. Uh, listen. Buddy. Listen. Buddy. Listen. listen. Sport. Listen, Jabroni. Oh, wow, that hurts. Here's the deal. Sam Donald is not your 49er fans, number three pick in the draft. He's someone else's. He is not here to be your starter. You already got one. So you have to look at him through that lens. I am not falling into the trap that I have heard others fall into with regard to Sam Darnold being like Steve Young and Pushing Brock Purdy and well, those are Shanahan's words. That's well, he did not say he was Steve Young, and st- he did not say that he was going to push Brock Purdy. Others have. Nobody said. Uh, wow, when Sam came out, we we really liked him and stuff, and um, uh, you know, we we we've had our eye on him and stuff, and you, we really like him and, but, and stuff. But you're all acting like certain players have not looked different when they get to a different system. No, they have. Okay, but for you so to d- expect us to discount what we've seen. In various Carolinas and New ah, York Jets, I, is I didn't say discount, but I'd like you to look at it through the more accurate lens. Nobody is saying that Sam Donald should come in and look like the starter. He is trying out to be your backup. I get that. And today's backup is tomorrow's starter, bro. Well, yeah, and bro, you don't get starter production when tomorrow's backup becomes today's starter. Gee, you don't get it. I don't want my backup coming in and seeing ghosts. And H. Listen, <laughs> like a you want. just whatever. Pick yeah, a consonant. Just, right? When Mahomes went out for a couple plays, you don't look at the next guy and go, all right. Chase Daniel. Come on, Chase. Heat it up. You look like crap with your stats. So what? He's your backup. Okay? So I'm not comparing Sam to Brock, and I don't care that he's been disappointing as a starter. It's irrelevant. 
What's relevant is how he looks compared to Trey Lance, who also doesn't have a good stat background. So for those of you who want to line up and go, oh, Sam Donald, we know who he is. You don't get to do that. Because if you want to use what someone has done, whether it's on a practice field, whether it's in college, whether it's in actual games, or simply the assessment by expert coaches, if you want to do that, then you have to knock down Trey also. More touchdowns and interceptions for Trey Lance. Same for Sam. Right. So we can, I mean, almost same for every single quarterback ever, by the way. Not true. Oh, not true at all, especially in the backup realm. Yeah, you'd be hard pressed. I mean, the, most ahead. of those guys pull are. Pull up Nathan Peterman's numbers. Go ahead. Is he still around? He is. Is he still with us? Is Peterman still on a rock? Grandy, he is, isn't he? Still, the number one thing that burns my gears about Kaepernick is that Nathan Peterman's got a job. I'm pretty sure Peterman is with the Bears now, I think. He was uh, last year. He was. Nathan Peterman is listed as a football Jesus, quarterback. Jesus, four tuds and 13 picks career. There you go. And, yep, he is still with the Chicago Bears. Yeah, that's their problem. Yes, it is. Yes, you it is. You pulled out your Peterman very fast. Well, <laughs> I thought I was hoping for I have a clean feed been on that. Accused of that before? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you went right to Peterman. You know? Like I don't know what it is y'all want out of a backup. Like don't muck it up. There is no debating. That's what we want. There is no debating that Sam Darnold is a very high level backup in this league. You can't debate that with me. You cannot go around the league and give me fine. He's a high level. You backup. cannot give me eight guys who are like clearly better than Sam Darnold as backups in this league. You cannot do it. High level know. backup is about as oxymoronic as any that's expression you can he, make. But that's what he's here to do. That's all he's here to do until he has to start, and that's where the fear comes in. The guy's thrown fifty-five picks, and yeah, sixty-one but, yeah. touchdowns. So and uh, good more, for you, more, Sam. More fear. More than, more fear than if Trey Lance gets to start. I don't know about that. I mean, we have to see. We have to see how how Trey looks the rest of the way. I mean, I think that there's less fear in that Sam Darnold probably won't make a lot of risky mistakes. He won't make rookie mistakes. He's been in the league long enough. Can Sam Darnold over the course of six weeks elevate you and lead you to the promised land? I don't know about that. Oh, and I think I that Sam is better than Trey. I don't know that either. I don't know why we're even asking that question, though. Well, we're asking it because it seems like every year, except Who? one, you've needed a backup quarterback in San Francisco. That's why we're talking e about except this, right? Brock Purdy is the only one who's been in any sort of a backup role that has actually come in and taken the team somewhere. Every other year, this is what I wish people would remember when we go, well, every year, the 49ers need extra quarterbacks. Well, all of those years, they lost. They lose. Your quarterback gets hurt. You lose. Welcome to the NFL. Now, Trey Lance came on, and then Garoppolo got healthy and came back. I know. Now, Garoppolo is, is, is obviously a little... Now, yes, if you're coming in for a game or two, but that's not the way people talk about it in, with the 49ers. Quite frankly, if it's a game or two, who cares? You'd like to win it. If you don't, you don't. You can still survive. Jalen Hurts missed two games last year. That's okay. We're talking about something that's more significant than that. Right. And the bottom line is about 95, if not percent more of the time, if you lose your quarterback for a significant period of time, curtains, deuces, you lose. When you have that's the way it goes. Mullins and Bethard, yes. yes. So, like, this is actually a luxury that we're even having this conversation with two guys who could potentially, I don't know, keep a chain link fence together. Link it to the next, link it to the next. But all these other years that everyone references, well, the nine hurt, quarterbacks get hurt, right, and you lose. Brock Purdy's Mullins the, and Bethard. Purdy's the only one. He's the only one who came in, unless you want to talk about the circumstances of Garoppolo's role, but even that, that was only middle of the season. Yeah, I don't two know. games for Trey. Yeah. There's only one who came in and went like, let me elevate you. Let me take you somewhere. Right. That's it. And you have the luxury this year of having a starting quarterback making less than a million dollars, and so you can stock up a little bit more in that room with Trey Lance, who makes way more than Brock Purdy, and Sam Darnold, who makes more than Brock Purdy. So you do have, you have better insurance now than you've had. I will grant you that. I'm just trying to figure out when resume matters. Sam's is longer. Trey's isn't good either.
Right. So why, like... Well, it doesn't matter because we're talking about backups. Okay. That, but it does but matter because point. you need the backup. You so, might, or you might not. Right. You, Odds are, and history would indicate that you're going to need a backup. But but needing, a, again, needing a backup, does that mean you need him for two games? Does that mean you need him for ten? Odds Maybe are you, somewhere in between. No, odds are actually that you won't need him for 10. Odds are. Last year, you needed your backup for 15. Correct. Correct. That's last year, and in fact, that's picking up for different players. Brock Purdy's career suggests that uh, in his games, he starts. Every game he was asked to start, he started. Right. He has not missed a game. Didn't finish every game he was asked to start. Correct. And that's really the point Correct. of... And, and if that had been early in the season, obviously that would have been a season-ending injury. Correct. There's no doubt about that. So if that was in his seventh game of week seven... Would have missed the season. You're going to need 10 more games. Yeah. And the year before that, you had Jimmy went 15, you had Trey for two. The year before that, Jimmy quarterback six, and then you had Nick and CJ. Uh, I, I just think that the point... We're kind of making the same point in different ways. I think, yeah, resume doesn't matter... To the extent of, all right, Sam, you are a 49er, and if something happens to Brock and you need to quarterback, Shanahan's not going to look at it and go, you know what, you threw 55 picks. <laughs> we're not, you know what, we're right. not going to let you throw it because your resume. Like, I, I just think that we should all, everyone should be making the effort to remove history from this conversation. If you want to enter history in this conversation, then Trey Lance should be starting because that's what they drafted him to do. That's the history. Well, the history is Brock Purdy's it, never lost a game he started and finished. That's the history now. But if you want to go back to the last three and four years and talk about what Sam did, but then you don't want to go talk about what Trey's done. Or do you want to erase all of it and let's just be here now Thank and you. tell us what you see? It's a great book, by the way. It's a good album by Oasis, too. Of course. A little quirky. I know. <laughs> anyway, just tell us what you see. So if you want Trey to be ahead of Sam, for me, I would submit, are you willing to say you have watched both games in full, you have studied all 22 film, and maybe you have at least done some sort of, if you're just a fan, right, some sort of practice work, which is at least doing a lot of reading or watching video, and you're willing to firmly state that right now in this system, in 2023, Trey Lance has clearly outplayed Sam Darnold. I defy you to do it because it's factually untrue. But if it, well, it depends on how you see it. And I think this goes to your earlier point of everybody sees what they want to see. And, you know, that's not facts. Well, that's not facts. Th I don't, there's I'm nothing not rooting, factual in this. But I'm not rooting it's all for, opinion. No, but people, you're, you're taking what you want to see and then. Grabbing on to only that. I don't want Sam to beat Trey. I don't want Trey to beat Sam. You don't care either I way. I do not care. You want the best quarterback to play the best and have your team win. I want to go 17-0. and And Kyle Shanahan is of the same mind. And for anybody to think that Kyle has a bias either way about either player or any of these players, I think is nonsensical. Kyle wants to play the best quarterback that he thinks gives them the best chance to win. And I'm with you in that same way. All I'm saying in terms of this discussion is you can see whatever you want to see. And you mentioned this earlier based on your own biases. The Sam Darnold throw that bounced off Ronnie Bell's face mask, either that was a terrible uh, play by the receiver or the throw was too high. Uh -huh. If you believe that Trey should be ahead of uh, Sam Darnold, then you're going to look at that throw and blame the quarterback. So we all see what we want to see, and that's where it, it doesn't become, quote, factual beauties in the eye of the beholder and ultimately Kyle Shanahan's opinion is the one that trumps all uh Peter in Milbray uh you're right your import your opinion may not be as important as Kyle Shanahan's but we still want to hear it Definitely. hi Peter what's up not much thanks for taking my call yeah man um I think we as Niner fans have PTSD because of Jimmy Garoppolo before Jimmy Garoppolo who's Bones were made of glass, and his tendons were made of twigs. We didn't have an injury problem in San Francisco when it came to the quarterback position. It just, you know, Jimmy just got hurt. Jimmy's no longer on the team. So, I mean, I, I don't know why everybody thinks that 
Brock is going to get hurt now. Like you said, Willard, it's, it's, it's a different season. It's a new season. And it, this is what we got to look at is we can't just think of the, of the pessimistic and think of, oh, you know, well, Brock's going to get hurt sometime this year. We got to make sure we have, you know, two backups behind him. It's, you got to look at it as, yes, last season sucked, but this season's new, and it doesn't mean that Brock's going to go down. So, like, it, it, we, we don't have Jimmy anymore. We don't have the whole, you know, like, specter of injury at the quarterback position. At least I don't think we should. Well, Peter, I'm, I'm with you from this perspective. I think it's completely fair for any 49er fan to be worried about it. I think it's completely fair for the 49ers to be worried about it. Right, they've had injuries in the past, and 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 your past, you, you you take that with you when you when you behave going forward. But I agree completely that the idea that the 49ers should and all of us should assume that there will be injuries, and the quarterback will definitely uh, need to be replaced, and we are going to get to QB two, and we are going to get to QB three, and all of that. In other words, an NFL team can't plan for that. You, you, like, you can't. You have to plan like your QB1. When you're building your roster, your QB1, and, and, and a lot of your ones are going to be there for you most of the time. Right. But at the same time, much like when you leave here and you drive home, you're not planning on getting a car accident, but you have insurance. You have car insurance. Yeah, be ready. I'm not it's saying do be because ready. the law predicates that you must have car insurance, that but too. even before it was the law... Back when we were younger, you had car insurance just in case. And so the Niners now have QB insurance just in case. It's not to say that because you don't have Jimmy Garoppolo, now you're not going to have a QB injury. And it also doesn't mean that just because Kyle Shanahan's the coach guarantees that you will have a QB injury, but you got to have insurance. And you happen to be driving a very expensive car with great weapons at receiver, the best running back in football, an elite tight end, and a Hall of Fame tackle on the left side. So you want to make sure you have insurance. It'd be foolish if they didn't. No, of course. You're going to have backup quarterbacks. I but just if they had to... gone in with a, another variety of Mullins and Bethard, if that was your backup I... behind Brock Purdy, I think it'd be foolish. Here's what I'm getting at. You hear a lot of people, and I would actually even submit this a little bit to you with regard to Friday night. Y- y'all want Trey Lance to get as many reps as possible. Well, I would suggest to you that as you get ready for the season to start, that's putting too much agency into QB3 because QB3 is someone you are planning on not using. You might. You might sure. be forced into it. He might be QB2. We don't know. Maybe. It doesn't look that way. But planning to use QB3 is not something that the 49ers should be doing. They should not spend all kinds of time and resource. And, in fact, they're not anymore. He does not have his own playbook anymore. Plays called just for him. His reps in practice are getting lowered. And there's a reason for that. The 49ers are not planning on him being used this year. So that's all I would say. I we, we have reached the final preseason game. I would like the Niners to get ready for Niner football. And that does not mean playing this side game that placates social media and everybody's anger. We're the only city in America yelling about QB2 and QB3. Nobody else cares. Nobody else cares about their QB2 because they are sitting here early in the season filled with optimism that their team is going to play well this year. But nobody else has this situation in terms of who their QB2 or their QB3 is. This is a highly drafted guy who has never gotten a shot, according to some, And you're in a spot where you have a decision to make at the end of the year. So for me, why not play him in the third preseason game? Protect Brock Purdy from injury because he's your starter. And you know what? Maybe Trey goes out and he flashes. And some other team sees it and says, I want some, give me some of that. That's great. But like, I mean, this is kind of quirky. But if that's what you want, then play him against the threes. Play him in the fourth quarter. That's where he can, I mean, isn't it more likely that he flashes? I think it's more likely he flashes with better talent around him. Well, you're not going to like this idea that we're going to have Christian McCaffrey go help Trey Lance get traded. Like, that's not going to happen. I don't even know if McCaffrey's going to play. Probably not. Or if Trent Williams is going to play. Maybe. They might go out there for a minute or two. 
But you know what I mean? Like I would not play Brock Purdy, and if you're not going to play Brock, Brock Purdy, you might as well let Trey Lance get that first crack well, at it. Well, but that might as well thing. Like, again, if Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold's newer to the system than Trey Lance is. So he's got it, though. Does he? Oh, he's got it. Sam Darnold's got it. I've well, then there's this nothing I see from then this debate's over. No, the debate it's if not a debate. Them, it's you're trying to get something out of Trey Lance potentially on the market. I guess. I mean, again, like if if if, if Sam's quote got it, and Trey doesn't got it yet. Well, then what are we even talking about? Sam's QB2, Trey's QB3, let's get ready as such. I think Trey has got it, but I don't know if he's necessarily shown on the field that he has the same command as Sam Darnold, who's got way more experience as an NFL quarterback. Well, sure, but I mean, how much has he even shown? What have we seen from Sam in preseason games? A total of about 10 passes? He put Styles to sleep, we know that. <laughs> he was 11 of 14 yeah. on Saturday, Yeah, Sam Darnold, so he pretty damn accurate. Looked very I composed. Thought he was good. Yeah. Ran yeah. the huddle. He got you know he got the team in and out. He got everyone in the right spot. Yeah. And I yeah. and that's the the one thing that makes me ponder Kyle Shanahan's move because they were sloppy. They were super sloppy as an offense. A lot of a lot of uh, bad penalties, penalties from the 49ers. Sure. Yep.